Earlier, we concluded the lecture on topic one. We are now beginning another topic. And the topic is titled The Social Slash Political System of Nigeria Basic Features and Elements. Let me again reiterate the fact that this is a university. You are now in a university. This has an implication. An implication, especially from the context of knowledge interrogation, which means we have the additional responsibility of knowledge advancement through its amplification. When we had our first lecture, the first topic, I provided information, particularly in relation to the course, the justification for the course. And that it is principally designed, especially with the understanding that you, as youths, and as the future of Nigeria, should be properly brought up politically, socially, and legally within the context of the dream of Nigeria. In Nigeria of peaceful coexistence, particularly between and among the diverse groups that make or constitute the Nigerian state and society. We now want to look at the elements and features and it is important that we place or situate the understanding of these elements and features within the required context of scholarship. We situate or place the understanding of these features and elements within the requirements of scholarship, particularly the requirements of social science scholarship. We now ask ourselves the question, what are these requirements of social science scholarship? These are requirements within the thoroughness of investigation of a subject matter or social phenomenon or phenomena, as the case might be. The features and elements of the social slash group of Nigeria are what and what make Nigeria. What and what make Nigerians, and by extension, what and what make Nigeria, and what are they? Again, when we say the requirements of social science scholarship, in this case, 
we're referring specifically to the contemporary requirements or we refer specifically to the requirements of contemporary social science scholarship. And that scholarly entails a thoroughness of analysis. A thoroughness of analysis from the perspective of intellectual engagement of what science entails, particularly within the context of enabling the description, explanation, and prediction, especially as these roles of description, explanation, and prediction relate to the sustenance of political order in Nigeria. So what are the defining elements of Nigeria within the context of social science interpretation and analysis? The first is to situate the analysis within the context of proper interrogation and that is the context of history when i say history i do not mean history from the perspective of stories the telling of stories that is not my understanding of history the context of understanding of history here is in relation to what we call developmentalism history within the context of developmentalism and what is this history like this history is an attempt to go beyond storytelling by injecting into the analysis some elements of science. To that extent, we can say that the perspective of historical science provides the essential details, the essential knowledge details for a proper understanding of Nigeria. And I itemize them as follows. Number one, it's for us to debunk the assumption or the idea that we lack history. When you read through books, especially the books written by the wise, the understanding is that we have all, we have history only in relation with, with uh, only in relation to the contact that we had with the whites. That is not correct. That is not correct. One fact cannot be disputed. And what is this fact? There were people in Nigeria prior to the contacts with the whites. They may not become Nigerians. At that point, Yorubas, Hausas, Ishekiris, Benins, Lupis were not Nigerians. As any of the of this history. Which means there were in Nigeria of the past. What is being appropriately labeled as pre colonial social formations? That there were societies and social formations in Nigeria prior to the contacts with the whites. And evidence of history abounds 
abounds to support this. Before the wise came, there were emirates, there were kingdoms, there were princedoms, etc. etc. In fact, there were evidences of contacts, especially in the areas of trade and diplomacy between and among these pre colonial social formations before the whites came. The whites came as a result of complete annexation of Lagos in 1651. It was an ancient of Lagos that, has, that indeed provided the platform for the formal establishment of colonial rule in Nigeria. By 1900, the British were always, I mean, the British were in existence. And there were protectorates then. Nigeria divided into two protectorates. The Northern Protectorates and the Southern Protectorates. At different levels of what we can call social sophistication. Different levels of social sophistication. And what we can use to justify that is that even when the British came, they met on ground an organized system of administration that made possible the idea and implementation of indirect rule policy by Lord God. There was a system of administration that was already progressing in terms of enabling the essence of government, protection and welfare, protection of people's lives and properties through the maintenance of law and order and responsibility to their welfare. It was a system of government it may not have been at the level of today's or that of the British, but it was still a government, a level of government. So, the starting point is for us to debunk the idea that we lack history. That is not correct. As at the point that Nigeria was amalgamated in 1914, there were, there were social formations of almost 450 groups. That is the first thing that requires emphasis and further reiteration. Now, the colonial administration of Nigeria or the, colon the colonization of Nigeria again helps to explain the features of the political society of Nigeria. And part of the explanation is that one, Nigeria is multi ethnically segmented. Nigeria is what? Multi ethnically segmented. Just as Ale indicated, today we have over 450 groups. You may begin to wonder, is that is it, can this be correct? Yes, it is. Take the case of North of Nigeria. Hausa is just a common language. Of all the states of Nigeria, it's not only in Nigeria, 
outside the language cuts cuts across the Sahel of West Africa. And again, take the case of some 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 states of the north. Gombe and Bauchi states, for instance. Here in southwest Nigeria, there is relative homogeneity in our local governments. Ijebu non local government, for instance, is comprised of Ijebus. Predominantly, almost 100% of people from of people of Ijebu North local government origin, where the universe is situated, are Ijebus. But that's not the case. In places like, like uh, Bauchi and Gombe. In fact, in these cases, it is not always the case that even at the world level, the world level, world level of a local government, people there speak the same language. It's not always the case. They have their different dialects. Only that what is common to them is Hausa. Everybody is able to speak Hausa. But not to the extent of depriving them their ethnic or sub-ethnic consciousness and identity. So, the second is also to begin to demolish some of the vague assumptions about the organization of the Nigerian state or about what Nigeria is. Again, it's not true. That everybody's an outsider, just as I said, or that they are all Muslims. It's not correct. In Gombe, for instance, there are quite significant Christians, number of Christians. Even when in their names. Some bear English names. Some bear their names in their own local dialects. So we need to emphasize this. But again, colonialism has brought about a kind of development. A kind of orientation to development to the essence of constituting a future, a feature, a feature, or an element or characteristic of the Nigerian political system. The first point is still primordiality that Nigeria is multi ethically segmented in the case, the extent of primordiality. And when we have that, it indicates further the presence of what we call prebendalism and clientelism. So under that circumstance, politics is not about service. Politics is not about national service. It's not about public service. Politics it's about serving yourself first and foremost. Serving your family, serving your town or village of origin, serving your state, and your country comes last. And this is well amplified in what Professor A.K. calls the theory of two publics. 
primordial attachment to our places of birth and civic attachment to the Nigerian state. Even though the constitution makes it clear that a Nigerian is a Nigerian. The constitution defines who Nigeria is and goes further to prescribe the requirements for particular elections. But you and I know the reality. There's the Nigeria is arranged in such a way to convey the fact that some people are born to rule. And that has been the practice of the most recently. So politics is not about service. It's about what we call primitive accumulation of capital. You are, in you, are, you, are, you, are, you are in government, not because you want to develop Nigeria or serve the people, but to enrich your personal pockets. So they say that people now sell what they don't need. These are the many elements of the Nigerian state. Politics is fundamentally not about service. It's about yourself first and foremost. And what happens? then there's no spirit of nationalism. There's no spirit of patriotism. There's no spirit of that attachment to the to Nigerian state. And that again explains why the system of government is federal. You can see the remedy of Nigerian state. That's what we call revenue allocation formula. Until very recently, when we, when we now have 13 percent derivation for the oil producing states, the understanding of federalism is that the regions that don't have have the advantage or benefit of being served, provided for, or catered for. By the regions that have. But that has its consequences and effects within the political arrangement of Nigeria in terms of excessive politicization and marginalization. Excessive politicization and marginalization. These are issues. To the extent that the dominant groups want to dominate forever, if not for instance for the Willing Commission of 1958, perhaps the minority groups in Nigeria would not have been provided for and the very constitutions that came thereafter. The stresses or the stress or put emphasis on equality. The child of a farmer and that of an oba or an emir are, by the comments of law in Nigeria, Nigerians of equal status. Even though we, we, we seem to be emphasizing on theory rather than the practice, but it's just that people are not challenging. And that's part of the need for this course. Is to give you the right civic education, the right functional education, so that you don't challenge some of these things. If they are not challenged, well, it's most, it's most unfortunate for the, for the present and future of Nigeria. But the fact that the constitution is there, not that the constitution is just there, the constitution is written 
and rigid. It's sufficient to provide for a better Nigeria. Especially when people know their rights through education. They have the education, they know their rights, and they have resources to fight, even when these rights are trampled upon by whatever arrangement of politics. Another significant element of Nigeria is more of religion than spirituality. To the extent of indicating, in some instances, religious fanaticism. Two things determine at any point in time who a Nigerian president is most likely to be. One, ethnicity, and two, religion. They've been manipulated. Ordinarily, it shouldn't be where anybody comes from. Whether you are from Sokoto State or River State, should not shouldn't be of concern to anybody. Rather, your ability to perform and decide your functions credibly well. But the fact that there's what we call politicization of ethnicity and again, the manipulation of religion for political ends suggests so the need that we should begin to think of reconsidering the arrangement of the Nigerian state. And that's why some people are, are suggesting the complete dismemberment of Nigeria. Through what people, some people call restructuring. No, the Nigeria should disintegrate totally. Or that there should be returned to the old regional arrangement of the 1960s, before 1966 in particular. What do you have again? The mode of integration of Nigeria into the political economy of international capitalism has its consequences. Every economy of the world is defined by its structure. And when we talk of structure of an economy, we talk of religion between among the structures. Structures properly organized, and there is an relationship between and among them. But what do you have in our situation? We produce what we don't consume, and consume what we do not produce to the extent of permanently or regularly, whichever that is happening in this case leading to a balance of payment deficits and crisis. Leading for that to maldevelopment or stagnation. Stagnated development or maldevelopment. We tend to have a structure of government, a type of political system, a type of political arrangement that cannot so, or provide permanently for the needs of our people. That is the reality. And that leads to the cost of government. The argument is that this choice of presidential system of government 
is not good for Nigeria. Especially given the level of our economic development. That we don't produce anything. We produce next or nothing. We only consume. To the extent that we have more budget provisions for recurrent than current capital expenditures. More debts than foreign exchange earnings. And regular imbalances. Particularly between, between and among inflows and outflows. To the extent of permanently strangulating the financial resources of the Nigerian state. We have youths that are completely disoriented. Youths that are completely disoriented. Globalization, ordinarily. Especially from the perspective of technologization, should improve Nigeria's social relations. But that's not what is happening. Our youths are the so called Yahoo Yahoo youths, the Yahoo Plus youths. That, in the case, also suggests the existence of a disorientation. Nobody desires, none of our use in this case, desires any productive engagement. Everybody wants to be a celebrity. As one of the avenues to getting rich and getting rich quickly. This is a problem. And the lack of relationship between and among the centers of our economy is amplifying the problem more. The last six, seven, eight years indicate regular fights between farmers and headers. And what we have is a bad arrangement. We have an arrangement where the natural environment of regions of Nigeria is determining what people produce. We shouldn't be. Science should have, science and technology should have helped us out. Can you imagine the entire Nigeria, particularly south of Nigeria, relying on some few states of the north, specifically Plateau and Niger, to supply tomatoes? And some other areas to supply corn or maize and beans. So the arrangement is such that particular area or region of Nigeria specializes in food production. People to understand in animal loss boundary. And we can see what is going to happen now. Shortly before the layer festival, a bag, a bag, a bag of uh, tomato was sold for between 250 and 300,000 naira from the original 40,000 naira or less than that six, seven years ago. Why? Because the farmers producing these food crops regularly have their lives being shortened or attacked by the full and nomadic uh, men. There is as well insecurity 
there's armed banditry. All these are together to the extent of rubbishing the purpose of the Nigerian state. It is very clear in the Nigerian Constitution of Nigeria as amended what the purpose of the Nigerian state is. Chapter 2 titled Directive Principle of State Policy makes it clear what government is in Nigeria or by extension what the state is in Nigeria. But how are Nigerians, how are Nigerians enjoying Nigeria? That, that, that becomes an issue. There is disunity in the country to the extent of undermining democratic consolidation and the prosperity of the Nigerian state. Again, what is the power arrangement within the Nigerian federal architecture? What is the power arrangement? It seems to favor the federal. But the essence that it takes almost 50% of the revenue on Monday basis. Whereas local governments that are closer to the people, again, by virtue of personal provision, even for the for the fact that the case is in court, but this maybe we need to assess patients and see what happens. The autonomy case of local government. It is as if there is no government at the local level in Nigeria. That for that is as, as a base. There is a circumstance of hopelessness, of nothing in the midst of plenty. That is serious. That is serious. So, we are saying here that all these features work against the health of the Nigerian state to the extent of formalizing or socializing hopelessness. This concludes topic two of our discussion.